had a skip, I'm saying that the, the understanding of Caesar who replied because the Lord and God is how to proclaim Jesus and John. This is not historical, this is John's expression of faith. This is a common normal uh, New Testament the Greek is. but there's no but in this unless you're gonna refute it in some way to find the answer. Yeah, so I've got Ho Kurius Moi Kai Ho Theos Moi, which means the, the God of me and the Lord of me, which is the translation. My Lord and my God, yeah. in English. Yeah. The Latin Dominus of Deus is a title given to the Caesar at the time. He's not, he wasn't saying that, my claim is that um, the author here used a Latin term. He, he wrote it in Latin. He's saying that the term translated is a common okay. Latin term that was in wide usage at the time. Okay. I thought you were being funny. Okay. Um, this is one example. So, um, the language of divinity is used of creatures and human beings frequently in the, in the Jewish Bible, without any sense, for them at least, that they're infringing on monotheism. Okay. Uh, and I've given you several examples of that, and it, even a non canonical Jewish text from the first century BC, the Dead Sea Scrolls. So when you say, ah, oh, but Jewish monotheism, but well, that is the, the kind of stereotype we have about Jews, that they are pure monotheists, like Muslims are, yeah, like but Orthodox there's, Muslims, there's, but they're not really. But the thing not. is, with that term, when the Jews call someone my God, and if you can check it in the scripture, it's always referring to the Almighty. No, so this not. would be the... Yes. I'll give you an example. I've already mentioned, give an example. Let's look at no. Psalm 45. Okay. Let's look, because this is addressing the king. I mean, this is not controversial among scholars. But, uh, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm saying when someone says my God, not just calling someone God, but calling them my God, there's a difference. Well, there isn't grammatic, but it's still addressing No, yeah, because when it says my God, in the Bible, scripturally, you always find it's directly referring to the Most High. No, I've not, 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 not decided calling to people, Not calling people... Right, this Psalm 45 of my special Muslim... Um, Psalm 45, Ode for a Funeral Wedding. Wait, actually, you want to be a big royal wedding? Um, uh, what is it? Psalm 45. Ode for Royal Wedding. Do you want to read it out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just okay. like to. Uh, I'm going to get paid for doing this. I'm going to go into the. Yeah, go on. Right. <laughs> Really this, this is a, a love song. This is a love song. Yeah. Uh, it's a royal wedding. You know right? So this is the context according to this, this Bible. So remember, this is a royal wedding. It's a love song, and it begins here. And I, I don't know who the speaker is, but this is part of the problem. Who is the who is the speaker when it opens here? My heart overflows with a goodly theme. I address my verses to the king. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is like the pen of a ready scribe. So that's just the first stanza. So the person being addressed is the king, the king of Israel, the one who's getting married. What, what right? translation is this? This is the first verse. <laughs> no, no, but what oh. translation? It's a special, okay, the NRS. Okay, okay, okay. okay, no, because I'm just reading it. Muslim version. Different. <laughs> this is the most scholarly translation. I want this is what you use at university when you use for your stuff. Okay. Then he goes on. So this is addressing the king now. You are the most handsome of men. Talk about sucking up. Sorry. You are the most handsome of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your thigh, O mighty one, your in your glory and majesty. So addressing the, the handsome king here, yeah? In your majesty ride victoriously for the cause of truth and to defend the right. Let your right hand teach, teach you dread deeds. Your arrows are sharp. What a compliment. So I must stop being sarcastic. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The people, the peoples fall under you. And then it carries on addressing the king. Your throne, O oh God, endures forever. Your royal scepter is a scepter of equity. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Your robes are all frank. Anyway, it goes on and on. Now, the rest of it is not germane to the theme here, but the king is addressed as God, and then it says, your throne, O God, endures forever, and then, therefore, God, your God, has anointed you. So God has anointed the king, he's a messiah, he's a messiah. That's what I'm 
one meet. So he's God and Messiah. The king is God and Messiah. He is directly addressed as God. But I, what, what did that, before you even read that, I said to you, in the scripture you will never find where someone says, my God. Calling someone, oh God, is yes, we know even from Jesus when he said, what looks like. So, so, yes, going back because, to this passage yes. then, do you okay. accept that a human being can be addressed as God then in the Jewish scriptures? Jesus said it when, he's, when they accused him of calling himself king. He said, did they not call other people Elohim? So, so is that a yes or a no? Yes, Jesus right. confirms okay. it in so the So if, if the Bible calls someone God, they're yes. not necessarily God. But when someone uses the term, my God, it's very different from calling someone, because as, again, because what you're saying is not you, because Jesus says it, it himself. It shouldn't be, no, because in the yeah. Psalms. Because Jesus says people are called Elohim. He quotes Psalm 82, yeah. where Jesus refutes the, see, Jesus in John 10, this is where you're quoting yeah, it, from, it can be, is accused of making himself equal to God. Yeah. And Jesus refutes them by saying, and he quotes Psalm 82, Two, yes. but did not the psalmist say ye are as gods yes. and if he who said ye are as gods yes. and he goes on is it an argument or yes. a tortured argument so Jesus but basically his confession at the end is he is the son of yes. God yes. which is not necessarily a divine title David was yes. the son of God Adam yes. the son of God and so on yes. so it's more complicated than the simple binary well only God is called God in the Bible no, I, never said, I never said I never made that claim because I said I couldn't make that claim because Jesus said other people are called God in his refutation to the Pharisees. My claim was, when you look at the term, my God, when any time anyone says it, it's directly in kind of submission to Elohim. So when in John's Gospel, Jesus is allegedly uh, reported as saying, I'm returning to my Father and your Father, my yes. God, yes. this term, and yes. your God, yes. Jesus is clearly saying to another separate entity, yes. You are God, yes. not me, because there's yes. only one God. But the, see, so he's I, actually refuting again no, the Trinitarian but idea but that Jesus is thing. God. There's a people get mixed up why he said it because in the, in the Lord's prayer, what does he say? He says he commands us to say our Father, but every single time Jesus says my Father, and he distincts between your Father and my Father because he's making a distinction that your Father, my Father, because that's why in the Lord's prayer he says when you lock our father as a collective but then when Jesus talks he always speaks my father and he would be your father he says to them after that prayer and then the reason for that is to think he's trying to make distinction between his relationship with the father and our relationship but he means that because otherwise he could say to them I go to our father that's it but he's always making a distinction and there's a reason because when Jesus speaks he speaks for a reason you see the reason I have a problem with everything you've said okay. but, um, it, uh, the, the, thank you you do feel pick off any insects they're calling it um, is because John's gospel as I understand it and I've given a reason one reason why is not a literal verbatim account of what Jesus said it's a highly interpreted account by the author of the fourth gospel about what he believed Jesus was for him the author of the fourth gospel believed Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. So okay. he puts those words on the mouth of Jesus, who then says in the first person, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay. These are not meant to be historical statements by the historical Jesus, like, like me reporting on the word of Donald Trump yesterday up in Scotland or something. We're not dealing with that kind of genre. We're dealing here with a highly interpreted uh, a gospel account in the genre that was known at that time as a, as a Greco-Roman biography. Uh, they're not historical accounts as we would assume a modern biography would be. So we, we're actually reading in our own um, literary understandings of what a, a story about someone would be. Now there are very few scholars in the world that think that John's account of what Jesus actually said. But, uh, to start, it's in Greek and Jesus spoke out there. But also, these words are so different from Matthew, Mark and Luke. Not only their style, the vocabulary, the content, the message, the focus on the relationship but, between... But, which is not found in the earlier Gospels. So historians had to choose which is more likely to be historical or the more likely is of Jesus. The earlier Gospels, or the last one to be written, and 99% have chosen in the last 100 years that the fourth Gospel is not the one that is closest to the historical Jesus. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Your premise is this. In the beginning of John, what does it say? In the beginning, God, 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 in the beginning of the Word, the Word was with God and the Word was God. You see John as the uh, gospel that confirms Jesus' like divinity and alludes to it. Yeah. He's saying now it's kind of he's writing what he thought Jesus would say. If that was the case, he could have easily written, Jesus said, I am God. Because he's confirmed it in the first chapter, John 1. But then he doesn't connect these words to Jesus. Because if he's interpreting stuff, what Jesus would have said, one 
next verse, Jesus says, I am God. But why it's an incons it's inconsistent uh, kind of hypothesis? I, I, I think for me, and, and for a number of scholars, um, John is a bit of a paradox. It's a bit of a, a conundrum. It's not very a consistent gospel. On the one hand, it has statements like in John 17, where Jesus, the words are put on Jesus' mouth. What, what is eternal life? This is eternal life. This is Jesus speaking that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus whom you have sent. Now this is pure Islam. I mean, uh, uh, the most hardcore Salafi, no, 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 no. if I may use that particular expression, can say amen to that. But at the same time, we have Thomas saying, my Lord and my God. We have John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, God, the word was God. These are paradoxical, uh, even contradictory statements. What is Jesus? Is he God or isn't he God? On the one hand, he's God is someone clearly separate and distinct from him. On the other hand, he is identified as God. Now, I don't have, I don't pretend to understand well, it's only to because if you're making a false assumption that John is interpreting certain things, because his lack of consistency would only show that he knows something, but he's documenting what he's observed. Because if he's making it up, it's very easy just to write what you want. There's no point of writing what he said in, you know wherever the Sanhedrin or in the courts or whatever and then just not have him say I am God it settles it would, it would the Christian be, it debate. It would be interesting to know what source, the, the author of John, yes. what was his source for, for Jesus' words? He was an apostle. No he wasn't. The author of so, John. Where does it say in the gospel that, that John was the apostle who wrote that gospel? Where you, should I give you my Bible? You well, he was a, he it actually clearly says that what he wasn't, it wasn't him. Okay, so who was it? Well, this is the thing, Christendom does not know. Who? Christendom as a whole. Christendom. Okay. There's a, there's a few speculative kind of things that they put forward. Okay. If you read the last paragraph of John, okay. you see that this was not John speaking. This was somebody else saying, and this is the disciple whom we trust. Mm -hmm. And his testimony is just loved. Yeah. Jesus loved. He doesn't say who he is. So this is, who's speaking the first person? Unknown person. John saying this is the disciple whom Jesus loved. We trust his testimony. Who's the third person saying about John, we trust his testimony. And, and Jesus loved him. say John. He doesn't say John, yeah, that's the beloved, the beloved disciples. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as, as Paul is a scholar of the I'm not scholar. early fathers, I'm not a scholar of anything. we have a church I'm an tradition expert as well, on ice cream which, and, sorry, and the, 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 uh, we have, So you have the, obviously the apostolic Particularly uh, tradition as well. Yeah, right. So you have yeah. uh, people like uh, Ignatius, who are supposed to be uh, disciples of John. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So now we have also. Well, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. When you say disciples, they had, they had seen uh, 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 the John in his youth, or perhaps who so knew John. It's all uh, rather tenuous kind of thing. Well, we have we we have a tradition, just like you have your tradition of yeah. Hadith. And I love, I love what, going into this. Yes. So, I love going into so this. let me just see. I, if I, I give I you a warning. Yeah. I don't mean to be funny, but you will lose. Okay. If you're, if you're going up against this guy on Snad, you will lose. No, no, because this guy. No, I'm not talking about. I'm just saying in terms of tradition you, you, because yeah. you can accept your, yeah. your but, but it's, it's very similar yeah. it's very similar all that we require all yeah. that we require is that it comes to trustworthy and precise well, well, the ch early church fathers were trustworthy according to Eusebius Papias couldn't for example look, Papias he believed the tradition of Judas's head uh, what's the word inflated so much so that the children couldn't run past him in the street people couldn't run past him in the street now Eusebius um, he, he basically says Papias does not know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. He calls him like some very hard, he has very harsh words towards, towards, towards Papias. Now you can't just say because the early church father said it, therefore it must be true. The early church fathers, are they actually saying we got it from John? Because there's a difference between uh, saying, yeah, I met John once in my life, therefore everything I say must come from John. Because they're not saying, they're not actually saying, I got this from John. It's just said, once in my life, I met John. It doesn't, it doesn't follow, follow through that everything they now narrate or everything they now actually okay. to Jesus was so, from John. So we have Irenaeus, yeah. and he said, uh, okay, so Asebius quoted from it. Uh, from, from, from what? Uh, I don't know what book it is. But he says, this is the quote, I remember how he spoke of his intercourse with John and with the others who had seen the Lord, how he repeated their words from memory and how things that he had heard them say about the Lord. Concerning who? Eusebius concerning who? Um, Irenaeus. So, Irenaeus. Yes. Uh, 
10, 20 years. Nah, sorry, you're, sorry, he's talking about Arena's part. He was talking about Polycarp. Polycarp? Yeah, yeah, Polycarp, yeah. sorry. So now, now, what does Polycarp mention from the Gospel? Uh, because, what, again, we have a historical figure called John. Yeah. And we have a gospel also called John, but was called John many years later. He's um, the gospel according to these kind of titles that were not found in the earliest manuscripts. They found in Irenaeus in the, towards the end of the second century. It's yeah. the earliest attestation yeah. of any names or apostles attributed or connected with those four gospels. Before then, when we can see actual quotes, for example, uh, uh, Ignatius of Antioch, he, he, it seems he quotes uh, words from Matthew. They could actually be oral tradition, yeah. uh, but anyway, there was also in Matthew. Yeah. But he never says, I'm, uh, this is the gospel of Matthew. So, but so also this is never until the end of the second century. So also what he wrote, he said, but Polycarp was not only instructed by apostles and converse with many who had seen Christ, yeah. but was also an apostle in Asia, appointed bishop of the church in Smyrna, yeah. whom I saw in my early youth, for he tarried on earth for a very long time. And when a very old man, gloriously and most noble suffering martyrdom departed his life, having always taught the things which he had learned from the apostles and which the church has handed down and which alone are true. So, for example, if he is a bishop, we, like, yeah. we can't question his credibility. So, yeah. yes, we have external things. Does he, does he know the four Gospels, is my question. Is that in any way saying the four Gospels we know today well, he, are the Gospels that but, he knew of? But he's confirming the Gospels that, that he knew of at the time. So did he mention the, the church four Gospels? Gospels? Did he mention the four Gospels? Or did he no, he didn't say... Okay, he didn't say the four Gospels, but he said... Or any Gospel. Because you're assuming yeah. this yeah, idea, yeah. Yeah. This, this idea that the, the four gospels are these are the four gospels. Yeah. You're assuming that that's what Polycarp believed. There are many other gospels. Yeah. There's a gospel to the Hebrews, which is referenced, yeah. this is which, which is a collection of uh, logia. It's not actually. Uh, it cannot be Matthew's gospel because that but is written is in thing. Greek. But we know yeah, that because he, no he was a student of that person. He was a student of them. So this has been passed down. So he. No, that's, no, that's an assumption. Listen that's to what he says. Because he said he heard the conversation. What, what's actually been, what, what is Polycarp actually saying that I got from John? No, no, but this is a firm. If the church traditions of that time of when, so we can see when he lived. Yeah. So if, like, historically, yeah, yeah. so if what he's confirming and he's not disputing what was what we know at that time, then obviously we have to. Pres presume that he's confirming what's there. It's not like he's saying he heard or something because no, it's no, like no, a no. direct because, because what was there? There's, most of it, most of it has been put in the shadows now. Yes. There was a very there is so we know you uh, the Ibionites. Yes. We know that they were there. We know the yes. early disciples in Jerusalem. Yes. First bishop of Jerusalem, James, yes. who actually after Jesus' ascension yes. carried on worshiping in the temple. Yes. Worship, now this is a key point. Mm -hmm. if, they, if, they, if they're worshiping in the temple, mm -hmm. they're clearly not calling upon Jesus. Why? Because so if you call up, if you enter the, the temple, the temple the place of worship. Yeah. yeah, it's not a place of worship. It's a sacrifice. Okay. It's not like a church. The temple is only a place of sacrifice. Yeah. And if they if they go in there and worship, mm -hmm. then they believe the temple is the way to forgiveness of sins. Yeah. They do not believe in Paul's gospel that only through Jesus' death can sins be forgiven. Else, why would they go to the temple? The temple is not like a church where you sit around and read Holy Scripture. It's a place of sacrifice. Sacrifice. All day animals are being killed. That's all it does. It's an animal killing machine. Mm -hmm. Horribly. So when it says in, in Acts chapter 2, the disciples went to went to pray in the temple at the hour of prayer, I should say. That's the hour of sacrifice. Okay. It's, it's not like they're going to a church of England having, you know, saying to Hail Mary. They're going there to sacrifice. Okay. Now, if they're going there to sacrifice, they don't believe in Paul's gospel, but only through Jesus' death on the cross. Okay. Are we so, saying so now, these now, are Jews? So now my thing is, you would have, have to because we know, according to the Quran, obviously Jesus had disciples. Yeah. Now, I would like you to present to me a credit or your version of events, because we have, you know, we know the gospels went out in different streams to different places. There's an assumption so, here that the, the Quran is not about uh, the Christian no, no, understanding of no, no, Paul's understanding of Christian because, origins. It's about no, because, bringing God to the because, yes, because if we're trying to trace the early Christians, we then have to look at the what key, is the key is in James. The key is in James. 
the, the, first, the, the, the brother of Jesus, the first bishop of Jerusalem, yes. the the original Yaqub the, the uh, James the Righteous, they call him. Okay, carried on worshiping in the temple, remained within Jewish Christianity, yes. was not a, a separate and distinct type yeah, of uh, Christian. Christian. He was a yeah. Jew who followed was the a Jew. Okay. And that's the Jew that believed in the resurrection. Yeah, but all Jews believe. Well, not all Jews. The Pharisees believed. In the Jews. Sadducees. Really? The Sadducees were a bit. They were sad. You see, they didn't believe. It. Yeah. That was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> the worst Christian joke yeah. around. Yeah. So my claim would be for them: what happened to Christianity? But there's no because such thing. You've had Paul, okay. who, who is alive during the apostles, spreading the false gospel, but no one. And his has managed to spread out, but then this real Christian. Read Galatians, read Acts, you'll see that there's you. a Read Galatians, particularly and 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 15, you get the sense of the super apostles from Jerusalem, it says that, are coming to Jerusalem. The pillars and, and, of the church. And, uh, because, because these are the enemies of Paul. Uh, the, the problem is to think of, this is Eusebius, I blame Eusebius for this, he creates the idea of a single Christianity from the apostles that came down to us to the third century. There were many Christianities, plural. And this is something you'll learn if you study. Uh, this subject, Christianity, a university, you'll get this rammed you know, so into your head. There was no single Christian faith in the, from the very beginning. There were many different Christianities. There was a Christianity of Paul, there was a Christianity of James, to get the extremes. But the other, other people don't even know about, we have the, the Jewish Christians who are perhaps more sympathetic. There are many different the Christianities. They had the Gnostics, and then we had the uh, and so on and so on. Uh, and it was only much later the idea of Christian orthodoxy emerged, but principally with the creeds, uh, the Council of Nicaea, and Cal and, and, and that's the funny thing because so even, even back into the even, first even, even in early Islam, Islam uh, like the like history, Paul was never someone who was seen as a like a negative person. It's only a doctrine that's come later uh, but, but because Paul, early Muslims actually they did, and you can go and check, they did not like put stupid down on Paul. They acknowledge him as a. Uh, like, not obviously, uh, the, 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 the Quran of the Sunnah is uh, Paul is never mentioned in, in the authentic early traditions. He's simply not rated because for Paul, the Messiah had to die to forgive sins. The Quran, as Jesus taught, and the same thing that you can directly go to God without any intermediary, any Messiah, or any priest, or any cross, and go directly to God uh, as your creator and ask for forgiveness. Jesus, the same as the message of Islam, the person who made a religion out of it, not just Paul, Paul is our biggest figure, who is associated with making a religion of Jesus rather than the religion about Jesus, sorry, the religion about Jesus rather than the religion of Jesus. Islam is the continuation of the religion of Jesus, Christianity is a religion about Jesus, and that preposition change, seemingly insignificant, contains a whole world of difference, and which is why the religion of, Je the religion of Paul is a different religion from the religion of Jesus. On all the fundamentals, I can go through them all now, what Paul taught in his letters is fundamentally different from what Jesus taught in the Synoptic Gospels. But, but, Would you like but, some examples to show you how different no, they are? But before you that, I just want to, because I'm sure in the Quran it says the, the Christians when Allah strengthened the Christians to be that yeah, yeah, yeah. So what Christians were those? Because yeah. the only Christians that prevailed the were the Trinity. No, 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 no. they weren't. No. So well, show the, me. The, the tafsir, show the tafsir yeah. of that means that this, this, um, uh, this early group of Christians, okay. the followers of Jesus, Al Hawari on dimension, yeah. who uh, remained within a kind of Jew, uh, Jewish Christianity, okay. still kept the laws, um, uh, regarded, accepted Jesus as the Messiah, born of the Virgin Mary, but not as God. So between two positions, not the Jewish position that he was a false prophet. So can you, can you hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. And how he was James is example. How, how he supported? Yes, James is example. James, James, absolutely. James, okay. uh, Ibionites. Wait, I didn't believe in the resurrection. It's a resurrection. You have to show because you can't pick and choose with Christians. You have to show me which. No, because if they believe in the resurrection, then that, the resurrection that is of what? Sorry, what of Jesus. Uh, the crucifixion and yeah. the resurrection, yeah, yeah, yeah. not the resurrection, the day of judgment. No, no, no. Yeah, because yeah, you didn't say what the resurrection death, sorry, was. The death and resurrection. The, the problem is one of the problems is we don't have any first account sources yeah, written by any them. of the disciples yeah. of Jesus or Jesus <laughs> at all in the Bible. <laughs> Nowhere can you point to me. Now I know you can say what about the letter of Peter? What about this? What about that? But scholars tend not to think these are by. Uh, for very good history, these are actually by these people. To Peter, for example, the second letter of Peter is seen by virtually all scholars in the world as a second century forgery. And this is really serious because.
because to Peter, not only says he claims to be by Peter, he claims to be eyewitness testimony to the ministry of Jesus himself. I saw when we were present on the tra Mount of Transfiguration, we saw this. It actually claims to be eyewitness testimony. But the vast majority of scholars, including even conservative, conservative Christian scholars like Richard Borkham, uh, Richard Borkham being, doesn't don't think that the Apostle Peter wrote to Peter. So we have actually fake testimony that is given, put in the mouth of the Prince of the Apostles himself in the New Testament. Now this is such a serious allegation about the New Testament. Now no one ever makes a big deal about it because most of the scholars are Christians themselves. So they kind of acknowledge it, but there's no ruffling of feathers. No one says, oh my God, this is really, 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 really serious. But when people like me come along who are not have no loyalty to the Christian tradition. Why, why, why should I have a loyalty to the Christian tradition? My loyalty is to Jesus and Muhammad and Moses and the prophets of God. I can point this out and make a meal out of it because the New Testament appointed virtually all the scholars on earth and the vast majority of whom are committed Christians, even the most conservative ones, admit that the second letter of Peter is a forgery, but this forgery contains alleged eyewitness testimony to the ministry of Jesus by Peter. This is so serious. It's like the Quran, for example, we're discovering that, I don't know, Surah 112 was actually written by one of the companions. I mean, is that kind of, that's kind of, is that extreme? Because well, it, it, would, it would threaten the whole integrity of Islam if suddenly it was no longer completely the word of God. That's how serious it is. So you don't, you don't believe what the scholars do say? No, no, but that that's what I'm saying. No, I, I'm asking you to believe scholars. No, Paul, look at the Paul, reasons Paul, why Paul they don't. can pick and choose scholars. So I don't know. I'm not picking about, anyone. No, I'm saying you could. I'm talking about all of them. What, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I, 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 that's what I said. I would have, have to check You have your own reason. You have your own evidence. Is that what no, you're no, saying? No, in terms of the Paul claim. No, look it up. You could do your homework, sir. I'm inviting you to do your own independent research. Yeah, that's what I said. I would have to. I can't comment on it. Please do. Please do. Yeah, I said I can't comment on it because I don't know. Go to any stand introduction. New Testament anywhere uh, in the shop anywhere and you will hear the same there are really good historical reasons why Chief Peter cannot be by the Apostle I can rehearse them now for you but this will go into a, a New Testament seminar I'm not university and yeah, you're not paying me to do it which is the most important reason would, would, would one yeah. basic one be that Peter yeah. couldn't read or write yes uh, uh, all right, you're now going to the reasons. Okay, yeah. Peter could, he's a peasant, he's a Galilean fisherman, he's a peasant, says he economically, he couldn't read and write. Okay. To Peter is written in very polished, upper class Greek, and it uses expressions which are only a very educated Greek person would use. It uses Greek philosophical terms like being of the same substance, um, uh, of the divine nature. Um, it also was not known to be by Peter in the early church. No one knows anything about it, no one quotes it until the fifth or sixth century. Does Eusebius criticize it as well? Oh, oh, Eusebius. So Eusebius, who knows it exists, by the way, he says it's not, uh, if sure, it's not definitely part of the, the canon. People didn't quote it as Of dubious authenticity or something. Of dubious, it was dubious. So even the early, and he's the earliest, seriously major early biblical scholar, or, or, um, uh, Origin as well didn't accept it. Um, so there are lots of reasons to doubt it. Um, and also, he talks about the apostles in one, at one time as if they were a distant generation in the past. I forget the exact quote, but he seems to talk about the apostolic generation as if they were in the distant part. Excuse me, it's supposed to be St. Peter. Why is he writing in this kind of distant way? Also, because of the um, eschatology, I'm not going to go into this different subject. I mean, there are lots of reason after reason after reason after reason after reason after reason. Sometimes some of them are forgeries, unfortunately, just to be the The one that there's unanimity, the others also, they're also like one and two Timothy and Titus are seen by most scholars as forgeries. Um, which are, they're, 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 which are no, they're the primary. Not, they're not forgeries. What I'm saying is they're, that they're not written by eyewitnesses. Uh, the consensus now of scholars is not written by eyewitnesses. There are many reasons why they don't claim to be written by apostles. They don't claim to be written by uh, the apostles themselves. They don't say I, Peter, oh, sorry, I, uh, Matthew, or I, Mark, or I, Luke. Um, they're, they're anonymous, the four gospels. Uh, they're, they're not uh, eyewitness accounts. We can see at the level of the Greek that someone is copying from someone else. We can map this out. Even in incidental detail, sometimes the Greek is identical. It's clearly, someone is copying from someone, and the consensus is that Matthew and Luke are copying from Mark. Why does this and Q? Why does this matter? Because when you look at Matthew, for example, he changes uh, lots of details and some big details in Mark to make 
points. For example, um, where Jesus makes apparent uh, which are where Jesus shows negative emotion, like he gets angry or expresses sorrow, this is this is smoothed out in, in Matthew and he no longer expresses uh, those. Sorry if that okay. And uh, just a few more examples. In same in the passages where he quotes Mark, he adds that the disciples worship Jesus, or they start calling him Lord, where he wasn't called Lord in the earlier passages. So Jesus now is become an object of worship or veneration. It doesn't mean he's God by the way, because Just as well, yes. the earliest gospel that they say could be uh, out of the four written is Mark. was Mark. Yes. Then and Mark, Mark was the Ammonius of who? So, uh, of, of, of Peter. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. We don't know. So, that. I, yeah, yeah, so because some uh, portions uh, of Peter right. actually match up. Here point, here point. So then we have then we have Matthew and Luke. Yes. Okay. Now these three are synoptic. Yes. Then we have John, the latest of all, non-synoptic. Yes. Now if you look at the if you get a, get a chart yes. and you put a dot for high or low. the Christology. The closer to the time, the lower the Christology. Now this is one point about Matthew. Matthew is allegedly an eyewitness. Why is he copying from Mark who's not an eyewitness? Who was Mark? Uh, a, a disciple of him, uh, Peter. Allegedly. That's we, don't, we don't know yet. Yeah. See, Mark, well, we, we find from early documents Mark is where anonymous. Yeah. It's only much later Christian tradition this that makes these claims. Okay. Do you understand? Because there's none Mark, of the Gospels say who wrote them. The, yes. Because yes. yes. what happens? But, what happens? But, hit us, hit us, hit us. Within the text, hit us, hit we us. see um, reference to Mark being a. Uh, because I think it's called, he's called Beloved or something, I can't remember it off John, my head now. John the Beloved Disciple. No, 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 but they reference Mark as like an Emmaus, like. Not in the Gospels. The Gospels are anonymous, as I keep on saying, no one ever believes me. Yeah. It doesn't what say you're in the Gospels assuming, any name of who wrote them. What you're assuming is that the historical figure Mark wrote the, the Gospel you now call Mark. And that the historical figure John wrote the Gospel you now later on call John. Same with Luke, same with... So these are two different things. The earliest time, as I, as I said before, the earliest time the four Gospels called out Matthew, Mark, and Luke and John was the end of the second century in Irenaeus' work, when these Gospels, the contents seemingly were quoted, maybe as old tradition, in, in uh, Ignatius of Antioch, Justin Martin, and so on. They're never called Gospels. They're simply quotes. This could be oral tradition, it could be quotes from the Gospel. But no one said, and the Gospel, or, or Matthew, who yeah, knew my beloved reason. Lord, said he saw Jesus. Uh, he never says that. He simply said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be, you know, quoting so that, that might exist from like a, like because, because, this, because this is the problem yes, again. It's it's a, a list of sayings. It's like we if, can't assume it's if the name, maybe it's not. Like for example, example if, yeah. if, Mark, if the church was inserting names no, onto the document, you, you would not pick right. Mark <laughs> as the writer. You would attribute to one of the, because, uh, the apostles. So that's why it doesn't, again, like that claim is like, Oh, but that's that's what you speculate. It may have no, been. No. Yeah, because it, it but even look, 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 it's look. not the church. It's Irenaeus. Let's get this case. It's not that the whole church is something have a council and decide to call these look, things. No, it is one man called yeah, Irenaeus yeah. who is a bishop of Lyon. It's a French bishop in France who yeah. decided in his writings to call them. This. But no one prior to him but, but ever aware, calls them these, these things. I, yeah, but as I'm so you have aware, to ask why does he call them for these things? Why does he attribute them? And the theory is is that the the gospels now in very common circulation they simply wanted to give them the the cachet and the the gravitas uh, as actually apostolic texts as they deserve. So, hey, Matthew being a, yeah, a Jewish gospel, he's a Jewish gospel. Yeah, so we, 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 we don't know why, yeah. we don't know no, why, no. but you can't, you but, can't draw any conclusions yeah, but, but then, we see this all the time in every If you're making a claim, you have to substantiate it. You can't say... So what claim am I making? If, 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 yeah, but if there were attributed names, like randomly, 
Yeah. No, I didn't say it was random. I, I, I didn't know the thought process <laughs> in our own history. All we know is that suddenly at this point they're called he was attributed the first to the gospel. Before that, when they're quoted, they're never attributed to the gospel. We don't, and I, don't, I assume there are various reasons why. But the point is, they're not eyewitness testimony. Matthew, for example, does not claim to be eyewitness. He writes in the third person. When Matthew himself is mentioned, I think it's in Matthew chapter 7, it's not, hi guys, it's me, and here's the meeting Jesus. It is, it is quickly passed over as if Matthew is just another character in the big drama. Um, so there's no reason even to think that he is an apostle. He's spoken uh, about. And the other reason is, of course, he, he's writing in, in uh, Polish, but much more Polish than Mark. He polishes Mark up. We're dealing here with peasants yeah, in Galilee, and now they're, re they're, they're refining and editing other people's writing in Greek. Yeah, I mean, this they, is not what fishermen did. The thing, like, and I said to you earlier, Paul, if I was after offshoot into Islam a little okay, bit. I, I, but I, I, I did hear one counter rebuttal, maybe you can clarify. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Matthew was the tax collector, is that correct? Sure. So, so he would probably be most likely to read the Greek. In Galilee, yeah. there were uh, the ordinary tax collectors who went around collecting on the booths in the street. Yeah. Uh, they didn't have to read all right. And maybe the, the top, top, top tax collector of all Galilee may have had to read correspondence to be able to read and write. It's not that all tax collectors could read and write. Uh, okay. uh, 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 Matthew could easily have been historical Matthew. I mean, just an ordinary guy who collected taxes tax, in the booths. Yeah, yeah. He wouldn't have been literate in Greek Polish and be able to, be able to, write, yeah, yeah. Be able to write gospels. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a huge leap. That's a jump. Yeah. Uh, but to say that the top tax collector the guy, you know, the regional that's, uh, controller that's, that's for plausible. Galilee. Yes, he might well have had to read correspondence but from the Romans and uh, so on. But or, to say that Matthew or, therefore would have been to read right, that's a mistake yeah. to make. But do you think I just I, find I it that, that uh, people oh, have been okay. come up with these yeah. reasons? Yeah. But then so if, you, if, 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 yeah. if you apply, because I said it before, and that if you apply these things then to Islamic tradition, that in terms of you see Muhammad as in the early priorities as a very normal person, and then later on he becomes this really like divine person, and I to the night of the mirage, yeah. where you have the earliest fire priest of Aisha and again, the again, I, I do think, yeah. it was not bodily. Yeah. Then you have later ones saying it was bodily. Mm. So then I would also take this same academic standard of analysis that you're trying to I, 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 I have no problems with Ibn Ishaq, who I've read okay. bits of. The parts of that I think are legendary, and they read like legend. Uh, uh, they don't affect anything to do with the faith. I mean, yeah. Ibn Ishaq well, is not. Let me finish. Let me finish. That is let, one of the most important let, let me finish. Let, well. let me finish. Let me finish. Ibn the Ishaq. Five prayers? No, no, it's not. It's not. You, you're misunderstanding. No, no, no. The five prayers are not taught in the uh, They are passed down. Uh, Ibn Ishaq is not um, is scripture. It's not scripture. It's not canonical. Many of the some of the earliest leading scholars had a very dim view of Ibn Ishaq's uh, historical work. Uh, and uh, in my view, having read bits of it, uh, particularly the early chapters, okay. is clearly a uh, stuff full of legend. Now, nothing there that in any way uh, affects Islamic belief at all. By legends, I mean you know uh, cosmic kind of uh, occurrences and fantastic and fabulous events that attend the birth or the this or that event in Muhammad. I mean, mm, okay, if it was attested to in, in rely on Hadith or on the Quran, I might believe it. But uh, you know, you can see the usual style of embellishment and yeah. legends are the, the way legends accrue to historical figures, like Jesus in, in later Gospels. For example, you know the, the, the zombie apocalypse, for example, yeah, yeah, which is yeah. clearly legendary. So I, I'm willing to concede that. I draw a, a line, a, a hedge around the Quran, of course, because th 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 there is no sense of that in there, and well, in the authentic Hadith. But, then the but Ibn Ishaq is if, neither if you're of those sources. In the zombie apocalypse, then I would also question what mosque did uh, Muhammad visit in Jerusalem. Again, let's look at the methodology of how we look okay. at these things. Yeah, I believe what, what you've just mentioned is basically quoting yeah. apples and oranges. Yeah. No, it's, it's a plan. It's uh, the same like, academic it's, it's standard. It's not. To analysis. Okay. Yes. How? Okay. But you have to know a bit about the hadith and how they work, okay. and a bit about uh, the historical biographies, Syria ser literature, okay. as I just mentioned. Um, the historical biographies and the Syria liter literature, the criteria for acceptance yes. and and actually transmission is not the same as the hadith criteria. Okay. okay, so I can find a, a book now mm -hmm. and it says some fantastical things and it may have some exaggerations in a book of history. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't take that as faith. Okay. In order for me to take it as faith, it has to have a rigorous kind of check that okay. it must be... But the uh, Quran says he went to the furthest mosque. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. If you're getting caught up in the detail, we have to understand the methodology. If we can't understand the methodology, then we're, then the, we're not going to understand the detail. Okay. The methodology should be that it must come from trustworthy and precise narrators. Okay. Now, Ibn Ishaq, he's a historian. What is his job? What is his intent? Him writing as a historian, what is his intent? Okay. Is his intent to provide uh, uh, individual chains of transmission for each occurrence of an event? It's not, that's not his intent. Okay. His intent is to basically, like Luke's intent, 
summarize and compile. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, the serial literature for us is very much like yeah, what you have. Uh, yeah, but as now you you. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Now, for us to accept something that I can't now say the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said X, Y, and Z yeah. unless I can establish it goes back to him. Okay. The same with, thing with Jesus. I can't now Jesus. I can't now say Jesus said X, Y, or Z unless I can establish with him. But, and I, and I'm, I'm saying the same thing for you. But you're you applying a biased standard of historicity. So if I went to an, for example, a Bart Ehrman of Islamic scholarship who had no uh, action, like. Um, Association of anything, and we talk about Ibn Ashaq. He wouldn't say about the science of Hadith or anything. They will historians will look at the earliest writings and see, and then develop an analysis. Because that's why I feel it's like you look at the Bible and apply one standard, but then when it comes to Islamic tradition, no, no, but it's because you don't have look, look, it's because you don't have this nerds, okay. the chains of transmission, and you've only got this kind of biographical, biogra biographical literature. That's why we're saying the same thing. Our Ibn Ishaq yeah, is like your Gospels. If you had Isnad, we would compare your Isnad. We would look at your chains of transmission. The Jews have an Isnad in, in a book called The Ethics of the Fathers. We look at it, we analyze it, and we, we, take, it, we take it seriously, okay? However, when we look at it, one of our scholars, Ibn Hazm, he mentioned that they don't have, really have anything strong, okay? But at least you can come to the table with something. Now, when you mentioned earlier that you go into the to the church fathers, mm. this is a type of isnad, a type mm. of change of transmission. Mm. Okay, so now you're talking. Now we can actually compare and contrast. Mm. Okay, but when you're just saying, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna criticize Ibn Ishaq, mm. Ibn Ishaq is not belief for us. Mm. It's not like we don't get our beliefs from Ibn Ishaq. We don't even get our fiqh rulings yeah, from Ibn Ishaq. So, for example, there's 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 many books in history. Mm. I can't. I don't. The, 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 the books of history, the Muslims do not go to their books to prove their creed mm -hmm. or prove their jurisprudence from books of history mm -hmm. they go to the books of creed to get the to get their creed they go to the books of jurisprudence to get their jurisprudence mm -hmm. and they get their books of uh, explanation for their books of for, for explanations yeah it's simple but, but the we, thing but is we the, don't the, have the, to, we don't the condition to is to that it must right? yeah the what condition is that it has chains of transmission yeah. going back to that's fine the but all, all Eva, i'm saying to you in the quran if yeah. you went to the furthest mosque which is the furthest mosque he went to because the, there was no nothing there so then we're now testing his what, what's, what's, the what's the reference in the Quran? Uh, Al-Quds, he's talking about he went to Al-Quds, Jerusalem Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, what does Al Quds mean? And then he's a mosque, is it? Yeah. No. It's the, it's the Temple of Solomon. It's the, the Temple of Solomon. The Temple Mount. Okay. Is, that, is it called a Temple? No, no, no. That's what I'm asking. See, so he, yeah. he, he's he's giving a spin okay. on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Stuff. okay. Yeah. Let's actually find out exactly what okay. we're saying yeah, before yeah, we yeah, draw these conclusions. If you have your, if if you you have say, your Quran, you say, it's not talking yeah, about. If you have your Quran or whatever, we can yeah. look at the verse. What is the verse? What is the verse? What's the verse? I don't, I don't know the now, I don't know the okay, let's look at If you Google uh, it, I'll look it up. Yeah, right, it's looking there, right? But I don't know the exact term. Okay. Got your favourite translation. Yeah. Closing all the exits. <laughs> Sorry? The closing all the exits. So what serial number is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, 17, is it 1760? 1760. Uh, so Oh my god, what's that? Yeah, 17. Seven, chapter 017, verse 60. So, which sir is it? 17, 1760. Oh, that's right, yeah. That's the first. 16. I've got very soon anyway. You can continue. So, 017, verse 60. Yeah. I'm having an actual eyewitness and a dream on the night of our Isra. And there's a note here. Good God. Sorry, I'm going to read it in the dark here. See footnote of, of another blooming verse. Mm. Uh, Are you okay. right for light? Or do you need Yeah, I, could, I do with some light. So, sorry, so I'm struggling a bit here. Ah, here we go. I've heard it as an actual eyewitness and not as a dream on the night of Al Isra. Uh, one. Uh, see footnote on. Uh, is that. F yeah, is that verse. That's not in room. It's 5312. Yeah. It's confusing. 5312. Now, uh, we get 12. 52. Uh, is it 5312? 5312. Sorry. So it's the very last. Oh, here we go. Is the 12 ending there, though? Yes. Up to you, Balanda. 
Oh, it's all about, oh god, there's masses here. Okay, um, there's a huge amount of text here. I'm not, I'm not going to go through this now. Life's too short. What's your, what's your point? You're saying that the later traditions say that it was bodily and the early ones say it was in the, in the spirit. And the, in addition to that, yeah. even though the, the later traditions say it was bodily and confirm he went to the furthest mosque, we know there was no mosque there. So, but there was, no, there's the, the mosque was still there. There's, what is the mosque basically? The temple about? was destroyed How? in 70 AD. Why is it still there then? Because you have now the, the mosque that was built by Abu Bakr. No, no, no. That, that Temple of Solomon, yeah. we still have the Wailing Wall. We still have the structure there. Part of the temple, temple is still there. Yes, it is. The, the Wailing Wall is part of the Temple of Jerusalem. It's destroyed by the Romans. It's, it's like an outside wall. It's not the temple it's itself. It's the temple. It's, part, it's not the whole temple. It's a part of the temple uh, structure. And it's not all being uh, destroyed. Which is why, yeah. yeah, an outer wall. Yeah, but it's still part of the temple. That's right, why. They, that's why they worship at it because it's part of the temple wall. Yes. Okay. Even if we. But what, are you saying? Even if we go. Are that, you saying a temple is what the inner 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 sanctum? And only okay, that is a temple. Even if we go I mean, with that. that. But why are you uh, finding it like that but, rather than the? Yeah, but even if we go with that, I, my my state is dead. But then the, there were the disbelievers who didn't believe Muhammad, so they asked him to describe because when he went with Al Barak, he tied Al Abra, Abra, Barak whatever to yeah. however you say it, Al Barak. Yeah to one of the to somewhere and then he counted the doors for them so how can you count doors for a mosque that or a building that doesn't exist no 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 it does it did it did exist you, if you, you don't know the history you don't know the history, I'll tell you why okay so we know yeah. that when Omar ibn Khattab took over yeah. um, uh, Jerusalem okay what did he do he removed the actual rubble that was in the temple from uh, uh, with his own hands now again what's happening here we have the Persians prior to Islam we have the Persians who took control of Jerusalem and then the uh, Byzantines so they were going back and but, forth Hang yeah. on, hit a point, hit a point. Yeah, when now, Abu Bakr that, went there no 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 before that before that it was Omar but before that Omar, before it was that, a rubbish dump why was it a rubbish dump because, because the was, Persians yeah. were putting their statues of their gods in it in, when, they, was, when they took control yeah, yeah there was no temple no they were in that temple mount where, where the temple is, that place there, the, the Jews were still allowed back for once a year to worship there. They were still worshipping taking place there. They were banished in 135 CE in Bar Kokhba Revolt. After that, they were banished. Okay. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Was there a structure there? Yeah, of course there was. Of course there was. They're, they're inside they're, they're that, okay. inside that, inside that, the Babylonians, okay. uh, is that the word Babylonians? The Persians, sorry. Okay. The Persians, they would put their st statues in there. When the Byzantines reconquered from them, they would destroy those, but they didn't take out the rubble. 